Hello, my name is Gillian and I live in Ireland and I have recently been um, sent your daily readings by my home group leader from my church. I have started listening to you this month and I hope to continue. Thank you for that and uh, God bless you. Bye. Why, thank you very much, Gillian, all the way from the beautiful land of Ireland. And a really big thank you to your home group leader for introducing you to the Daily Radio Bible. That's so cool. There's lots of folks like you out here, Jillian, who were introduced to the podcast by a friend. So welcome to you both, and welcome to that home group, and welcome to all of our listeners all around the world. We're so glad that we can spend this time together in the pages of the Scripture. My name's Hunter. I'm your Bible reading coach, someone who's showing up with you every day, spending time in God's Word, letting His Word spend its time on us. You know how we need that, no doubt about that. And friends, today we are in the book of Genesis again, chapters 29 and 30, and we'll finish in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. Father, thank you for drawing us here today. Thank you that you're faithful every day. Thank you that we can train our ears to hear, that our souls can be encouraged by your word to us. We thank you for your presence right now, abiding with us. We ask that you'll open our eyes that we might see. Genesis 29. Then Jacob hurried on, finally arriving at the land of the east, he saw well in the distance, three flocks of sheep and goats lay in an open field beside it, waiting to be watered. But a heavy stone covered the mouth of the well. It was the custom there to wait for all the flocks to arrive before removing the stone and watering the animals. Afterward, the stone could be placed back over the mouth of the well. Jacob went over to the shepherds and asked, Where are you from, my friends? We are from Haran, they answered. Do you know a man there named Laban? The grandson of Nahor, he asked. Yes, we do, they replied. Is he doing well, Jacob asked. Yes, he's well, they answered. Look, here comes his daughter Rachel with the flock now. Jacob said, look, it's still broad daylight, too early to round up the animals. Why don't you water the sheep and goats so they can get back out to the pasture? We can't water the animals until all the flocks have arrived, they replied. Then the shepherds moved the stone from the mouth of the well and we water all the sheep and goats. Jacob was still talking with them when Rachel arrived with her father's flock, for she was a shepherd. And because Rachel was his cousin, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and because the sheep and goats belonged to his uncle Laban, Jacob went over to the well, moved the stone from its mouth, and watered his uncle's flock. Then Jacob kissed Rachel, and he wept aloud. He explained to Rachel that he was her cousin, on her father's side, the son of her Aunt Rebecca. So Rachel quickly ran and told her father Laban. As soon as Laban heard that his nephew Jacob had arrived, he ran out to meet him. He embraced and kissed him and brought him home. When Jacob had told him his story, Laban exclaimed, You really are my own flesh and blood. After Jacob had stayed with Laban for about a month, Laban said to him, You shouldn't work for me without pay just because we are relatives. Tell me how much your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The older daughter was named Leah, and the younger was Rachel. There was no sparkle in Leah's eyes, but Rachel had a beautiful figure and a lovely face. Since Jacob was in love with Rachel, he told her father, I'll work for you for seven years if you'll give me Rachel, your younger daughter, as my wife. Agreed, Laban replied. I'd rather give her to you than to anyone else. Stay and work with me. So Jacob worked seven years to pay for Rachel, but his love for her was so strong that it seemed to him but a few days. Finally, the time came for him to marry her. I have fulfilled my agreement, Jacob said to Laban. Now give me my wife so I can sleep with her. So Laban invited everyone in the neighborhood and prepared a wedding feast. But that night, when it was dark, Laban took Leah to Jacob, and he slept with her. Laban had given Leah a servant, Zilpah to be her maid. But when Jacob woke up in the morning, it was Leah. What have you done to me? Jacob raged at Laban. 
I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? It's not our custom here to marry off a younger daughter ahead of the firstborn, Laban replied. But wait until the bridal week is over, and then I'll give you Rachel too, provided you promise to work another seven years for me. So Jacob agreed to work seven more years. A week after Jacob had married Leah, Laban gave him Rachel too. Laban gave Rachel a servant, Bilhah, to be her maid. So Jacob slept with Rachel too, and he loved her much more than Leah. He then stayed and worked for Laban an additional seven years. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he enabled her to have children, but Rachel could not conceive. So Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, The Lord has noticed my misery, and now my husband will love me. She soon became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She named him Simeon, for she said, The Lord heard that I was unloved, and he gave me another son. Then she became pregnant a third time and gave birth to another son. He was named Levi, for she said, Surely this time my husband will feel affection for me, since I have given him three sons. Once again Leah became pregnant and gave birth to another son. She named him Judah, for she said, Now... I will praise the Lord. And then she stopped having children. Genesis 30 When Rachel saw that she wasn't having any children for Jacob, she became jealous of her sister. She pleaded with Jacob, Give me children or I'll die. Then Jacob became furious with Rachel. Am I God, he asked. He's the one who has kept you from having children. Then Rachel told him, Take my maid, Bilhah, and sleep with her. She will bear children for me, and through her I can have a family too. So Rachel gave her servant Bilhah to Jacob as a wife, and he slept with her. Bilhah became pregnant and presented him with a son. Rachel named him Dan, for she said, God has vindicated me. He has heard my request and given me a son. Then Bilhah became pregnant again and gave birth a second son. Rachel named him Naphtali. For she said, I have struggled hard with my sister, and I am winning. Meanwhile, Leah realized that she wasn't getting pregnant anymore. So she took her servant, Zilpah, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Soon Zilpah presented him with a son. Leah named him Gad, for she said, How fortunate I am! Then Zilpah gave Jacob a second son, and Leah named him Asher, for she said, What joy is mine! Now the other women will celebrate with me. One day during the wheat harvest, Reuben found some mandrakes growing in a field and brought them to his mother Leah. Rachel begged Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But Leah angrily replied, Wasn't it enough that you stole my husband? Now you steal my son's mandrakes too? Rachel answered, I will let Jacob sleep with you tonight if you give me some of the mandrakes. So that evening, as Jacob was coming home from the fields, Leah went out to meet him. You must come and sleep with me tonight, she said. I have paid for you with some mandrakes that my son found. So that night he slept with Leah, and God answered Leah's prayers. She became pregnant again and gave birth to a fifth son for Jacob. She named him Issachar, for she said, God has rewarded me for giving my servant to my husband as a wife. Then Leah became pregnant again and gave birth to a sixth son for Jacob. She named him Zebulun. For she said, God has given me a good reward. Now my husband will treat me with respect, for I have given him six sons. Later she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel's plight and answered her prayers by enabling her to have children. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. God has removed my disgrace, she said, and she named him Joseph. For she said, May the Lord add yet another son to my family. Soon after Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Please release me so I can go home to my own country. Let me take my wives and children, for I have earned them by serving you. And let me be on my way. You certainly know how hard I have worked for you. Please listen to me, Laban replied. I have become wealthy, for the Lord has blessed me because of you. Tell me how much I owe you. Whatever it is, I'll pay it. Jacob replied, 
You know how hard I've worked for you, and how your flocks and herds have grown under my care. You had little indeed before I came, but your wealth has increased enormously. The Lord has blessed you through everything I've done. But now, what about me? When can I start providing for my own family? What wages do you want? Laban asked him. Jacob replied, Don't give me anything. Just do this one thing, and I'll continue to tend and watch over your flocks. Let me inspect your flocks today and remove all the sheep and goats that are speckled and spotted, along with all the black sheep. Give these to me as my wages. In the future, when you check on the animals you have given me as my wages, you'll see that I've been honest. If you find in my flocks any goats without speckles or spots, or any sheep that are not black, you will know that I have stolen them from you. All right, Laban replied, it'll be as you say. But that very day Laban went out and removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted, all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, or had white patches, and all the black sheep. He placed them in the care of his own sons, who took them a three days' journey from where Jacob was. Meanwhile, Jacob stayed and cared for the rest of Laban's flock. Then Jacob took some fresh branches from poplar, almond, and plane trees, and peeled off strips of bark, making white streaks on them. Then he placed these peeled branches in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, for that was where they mated. And when they mated in front of the white streaked branches, they gave birth to young that were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated those lambs from Laban's flock, and at mating time he turned the flock to face Laban's animals that were streaked or black. This is how he built his own flock instead of increasing Laban's. Whenever the stronger females were ready to mate, Jacob would place the peeled branches in the watering troughs in front of them. Then they would mate in front of the branches. But he didn't do this with the weaker ones, so the weaker lambs belonged to Laban, and the stronger ones were Jacob's. As a result, Jacob became very wealthy with large flocks of sheep and goats, female and male servants, and many camels and donkeys. Luke chapter 12 Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I'll tell you whom to fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. What is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. I tell you the truth, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, the Son of Man will also acknowledge in the presence of God's angels. But anyone who denies me here on earth will be denied before God's angels. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when you are brought to trial in the synagogues and before rulers and authorities, don't worry about how to defend yourself or what to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what needs to be said. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware! Guard against every kind of greed! Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, What should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods, and I'll sit back and say to myself, My friend, you have stored enough away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? 
Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not to have a rich relationship with God. Then, turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food, and your body is more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them, and you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if your worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and He will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven, and the purses of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning, as though you are waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. The servants who are ready and waiting for his return will be rewarded. I tell you the truth, he himself will seat them, put on an apron, and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are ready. Understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Peter asked, Lord, is that illustration just for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant thinks my master won't be back for a while, and he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk? The master will return unannounced and unexpected, and he will cut the servants in pieces and banish them with the unfaithful. And a servant who knows what the master wants but isn't prepared and doesn't carry out those instructions will be severely punished. But someone who does not know and then does something wrong will be punished only lightly. When someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me, and I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I have come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against or two in favor and three against. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Then Jesus turned to the crowd and said, When you see clouds beginning to form in the west, you say, Here comes a shower, and you are right. When the south wind blows, you say, Today will be a scorcher, and it is. You fools! You know how to interpret the weather signs of the earth and sky, but you don't know how to interpret the present times. Why can't you decide for yourselves what is right? When you are on the way to court with your accuser, try to settle the matter before you get there. Otherwise, your accuser may drag you before the judge, who will hand you over to an officer, who will throw you into prison, 
And if that happens, you won't be free until you have paid the very last penny. And now may our Lord, who gives us wisdom to read the times, may he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Whose blessing will you see and receive? God's or yours? Will you force things and be a fool? Demand things and be deceived? Or will you trust and rest, receive and believe? Whose blessing will you receive? Blessing doesn't come from our own hands. The rich fool learned that the hard way. Blessing comes from God, in his time and in his way. If we don't, it seems we're destined to demand it from ourselves and from others. It's just like the rich ruler who built barn after barn thinking that this was getting him somewhere. But in the end, he died and left those riches to some unknown person. And Jesus says that he was a fool. We see the same thing with God's people. In the example today, Rebecca, Rachel, and Jacob, amidst their struggle and demanding, they finally found the blessing but it didn't come through their striving and struggling or their manipulation. The blessing and the gift they desired came from the hand of God and God alone. He is the one who opened a womb. He alone is the one who offers the blessing that we desire and need in this life. And Jesus says his blessing looks like a rich relationship with God. That's right from verse 21. God's blessing always looks like a rich relationship with God. We will find our truest riches and the blessing we desire in relationship with Him. The blessing comes from His hand, from His very being. If we don't receive our blessing from God, we will demand it from some other place, some other person, and that will leave us barren in the end, wanting in the end, a fool when all is said and done. The blessing of his presence come when we rest in him, when we are awakened to who we are in him, and we trust it. We believe in him and what he's done for us, who he has made us, being included into his very life. When we see this, our eyes are opened, and we see even in the simple things like witnessing a bird feasting without care, the life of a sparrow, a raven, an eagle in flight. We see that God cares for the ravens, for the sparrows, and oh, how much more he cares for you. So whose hand are you seeking that blessing from? From your own, some other person, or is it God? Will you seek your blessing from him? Believing the good news that he's come to proclaim, that he has embraced you, He has forgiven you, that you are his, and that you are loved. When we begin to live in this reality, that blessing will begin to look like a rich relationship with God. So let's seek his blessing by faith. Let's rest in the deep, deep love of Jesus, who has always loved us so well. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's a prayer that I have for my family, for my wife, and my daughters, and my son. And that's a prayer that I have for you. May it be so. DailyRadioBible.com is our home base out here in these interwebs, and that's where you're always welcome to stop on by. We love to hear from you. We have a fancy little voicemail machine on our webpage that allows you to leave a voicemail no matter where in the world you're from, just like our friend Jillian from Ireland did in today's podcast. So you too can offer your voice and let the DRB Nation know that they are not alone, that you are also on this road with them. So give it a shot, dailyradiobible.com. And for those of you who weren't here yesterday, I posted a brief welcome video And a little pro tip for those of you who are trying to go through the entire Bible with me this year, I'll include that video in today's podcast as well. 
And lastly, today, let me invite you to sign up for our newsletter. We send it out about once a month, and we try to encourage you. We try to give something away. We try to bring a little perspective, dare I say, wisdom <laughs> into your day. But sometimes I got to laugh at myself when I dare to think that there might be something wise that I could convey to you. But uh, there it is. I try. We try. And we'll continue to try to bless you with that monthly newsletter. So check it out. Sign up for it at the webpage. Well, that's it. I'm going to check out now. But what do you say? We all show up again here tomorrow. And let's do it again, my friend. One step at a time. Day after day. Showing up. And let's see what happens. Alrighty, until tomorrow, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye.